HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. And by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. Welcome to HCAB News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to fill you in on the latest happenings in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we'll take you to the final day of the seventh year of a firefighting camp for girls, Camp Bailout at the Ashland Fire Department. Matt Clark will fill you in on upcoming HCAM programming with our HCAM Insider. And we have the latest with Ashland Legion Baseball. But first, Hopkinton Fire Chief Stephen Slammon attended this past week's Veterans Breakfast with information about a safety program for seniors. On July 14th, local veterans met up at the Hopkinton Senior Center for the monthly Veterans Breakfast. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, As usual, Hopkinton Fire Chief Stephen Slammon was in attendance at the breakfast, but after some delicious breakfast, Chief Slammon took some time to inform veterans of a safety program meant to help seniors reduce the potential for an accident at home, such as tripping or a medical incident. And there's a number of people that love you guys and that want to ensure that you're safe. And we have someone with us today that frequently shares our breakfasts and I think has some words of wisdom that can benefit us. Chief Slammon, please. Thank you. I don't know, wisdom in front of these guys. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I promised I'd keep it like to the two minute mark, so I'm shooting for it. Um, community risk reduction has been one of my goals as a fire chief. Instead of going out and meeting you with an ambulance or a fire truck, I want to try to get into some prevention. So this year we started up a safer uh, program where we got a grant from the state to help seniors with uh, safety. Um, the only way it really works is if I get some type of uh, connection or partnership with you. Um, my greatest connection to the seniors right now is through the veterans, so uh, I really, uh, I kind of need you to help me get the program moving some. I look at it or envision us helping each other. Um, everybody's got a lot of pride. We have in the fire service, military background, it's hard to ask for help. And I need you to try to help me kind of break that barrier down a little bit so we can kind of help each other. Uh, I don't want to be intruding in people. Um, why do I come at it? with you. I've been talking about this with Mr. Alicio's uh, wife and the program here at the Seniors and then Hank and I have been saying, seeing recently that a couple of your members have had trip and fall significant injuries. And I, I sit there and I say, look at what the veterans have gone through and right now we're, you know, we'll have somebody get severely injured on tripping on a carpet or a loose rail or something like that and I, I want to work on seeing if I can get that part out of the way and get as many years out of everybody to join each other as possible. So that's kind of my goal. Um, education's the big thing. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time trying to educate you today. Um, the wisdom that I try to impart is if we can work together um, in this program, I can bring things like offer smoke detectors, carbon monoxide detectors. I can offer helping repair a railway, um, putting in a map that maybe you don't trip over. Um, we're just rolling this out. We're gonna shoot for the end of the summer to really get it. I've been working with the senior center, but Hank and I have been saying all of a sudden we've had these trips recently and we just, we wanna get ahead of it. So my ask is please look at us at the fire department, see if we can help you. You can do it, call me, do it, go through Hank if that's comfortable, fine. You know, help the guy next to you maybe make the call or invite us in. Um, 
I, I envision me coming to your house and us just taking a peek and trying to lower some hazards. I'm not doing an inspection. I'm not writing up tickets. Um, I'm not invading your privacy. I just want to help lower the risk if I can, and um, and I hope that you can kind of help me with that partnership. So just a quick, on the educational things, we're just talking about um, taking your time, exercising some, identifying pieces of carpet and railings that are loose, <coughs> Um, and then allowing us potentially to, to line up somebody to fix it. And the program is designed so that we'll cover the cost. So how far will it grow? I don't know yet. We just started with the Senior Safe Grant this year, and the more we do, the more we can expand it. So that's my talk. If you have any questions, let me know. Please do the partnership, okay? I've been uh, attending the veterans breakfast for a little over a year now. Uh, great group of people. It's uh, it's kind of my chance to get connected to the seniors. And uh, the reason I talked today was uh, we've had a few incidents of uh, trip hazards that um, you know I get worried about the level that seniors run into with trip hazards. And uh, these guys have lived some tough lives and they made it through a lot. And I hate to see somebody have a problem now because of a simple trip hazard that we might be able to work on. So I'm focusing on prevention right now. I'm trying to build a partnership with the veterans and the seniors. And uh, we just received a grant a few months ago that allows us to have some uh, uh, tools to work with to work on things like carbon monoxide detectors, smoke detectors, putting down mats that uh, are not prone to tripping, maybe fix a rail that's loose on somebody. Um, and just to get in and maybe visit and identify some hazards and do it as part of a risk reduction versus having to show up with an ambulance or a fire truck. So that's my goal. It's uh, hopefully a low cost um, benefit for everybody. And uh, it was nice to be in here today to talk to the group and hopefully influence everybody to be involved. Yeah, where did you get the grant from? The grant is through the uh, uh, State Fire Marshal's Office. It's a state program. Uh, they have a safer grant that we've used to uh, work with young students and um, that lowered um, deaths of children in fires by 75% over the last 20 years. So I'm hoping this program mirrors it. I'm hoping that there's some type of significant reduction in injuries to seniors um, in that same avenue. So it's a, kind of a low cost, hopefully high improvement, to, whether it's a quality of life issue or whatever we can do to help the seniors. And is this the first year that the Hopkins Fire Department has been involved with the grant? Um, we've done the SAFER grant with the kids for years. This is the first year that I know of, of the senior SAFER grant. It's only been out for a couple of years. So um, I just have one of my firefighters, uh, Sarah Jordan, is um, writing news articles right now with safety tips that comes out in the flyer that they have uh, here. So we did something this month on a electrical safety pieces to look for. And again, we're just trying to build a relationship with the seniors. Um, I work a lot with the veterans, so that's kind of my avenue in, and uh, see what type of results we can get over the next few years. Ashland Legion Baseball finished the regular season with a 12-6 and record and entered into the mixed Zone 5 and 8 state tournament qualifier this past week. Here is the latest with Ashland Legion Baseball. He's the uh, left fielder tonight. There's the pick, and there he's done. See you later. Nasty pickoff move. We see at least one or two a game. Kid's a freak. Coach Johnson runs out of the dugout as he's chased down by post-77 players with the Gatorade bucket as Ashland completes the 3-0 victory over and over to advance to the state tournament at Fino Field in Milford. Tom Nappy here to wrap up this huge win for post-77. Sean Babineau pitched a gem for post-77 as he pitches the complete game seven-inning shutout. He gave up seven hits and had four strikeouts. Post 77 took a 1-0 lead in the bottom of the second. Tom Onsey sacrificed to score Zach Pesson. With two outs in the bottom of the third, Post 77 struck for two more runs. Ben Thomas drove in Ronan Bates with an RBI single to center field. And then Zach Pesson reached on an error 
and that was followed up by a Lewis Rossi single that scored Jackson Horning and put Ashland up three to nothing, and that would be the final run of the game as Ashland Legion Post 77 takes down Andover three to nothing and advances to their first state tournament in a long while. Ashland finished the season three and 15 last year, but this year an unbelievable turnaround as they show they are among the best in the state and punch a ticket to the state tournament. For Larry Sacklad, Ben Butkus, Todd Carter, and the rest of our crew, I'm Tom Nappy. We thank you for watching this broadcast of Ashland Legion Baseball on WACA-TV in Ashland and HCAM Television in Hopkinton. The road continues on for Post 77. Enjoy the rest of your day, everybody, and we'll talk to you soon. Don't forget, you can rewatch any of the terrific Ashland Legion Post 77 games on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash HCAMTV. Coming up next on HCAM News, we head to Camp Bailout at the Ashland Fire Department, and Matt Clark will have our HCAM Insider. You're tuned into HCAM News. Don't go anywhere. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hi, my name is Margie Wigan, and I want to invite you to join me for my new show, Character Matters, on HCAM. We're going to talk about why do people choose the behavior that they choose? Why do they choose to be good? We're going to hear from people in history, we're going to hear from local heroes who make great choices, and we're going to hear from some puppets who talk about things they've seen, and they're going to say, what? Did you see that? Yes, I did. Please join us. Welcome back to HCAM News. This past week, nine teenage female students from surrounding communities participated in the seventh year of camp bailout at the Ashland Fire Department. Here is a look at what the camp is all about. Get them like line. No, that's right. No, that's right. They don't have to line up. They just have to be hand tight. Wait, so I just think that I'm confused. We just gotta do it. A firefighters camp for girls between the ages of 14 and 19 called Camp Bailout took place for their seventh straight year at Ashland Fire Department. Since its first year in 2011, the camp has gained popularity among the local communities and has caught the attention of several media outlets throughout the years, including the Associated Press, the Christian Science Monitor, and several local cable networks and newspapers. More and more people have gained interest in the camp's mission of encouraging more young women to become involved with fire and EMS services. During the final day of camp, the girls learned how to use the fire truck hose and also competed in an obstacle course and then later the students were officially graduated from the camp. What have you liked most about Camp Bellow and uh, what has been your favorite activity? We'll start over here with Devin. <coughs> I liked going to the ropes course, and my favorite activity was the free fall swing that we did there. I thought it was pretty fun going to UMass Hospital because we got to see all the women who work in like life flight and stuff like that, and see all the trauma centers. Uh, I also enjoyed the UMass trip. I thought it was really cool to see um, how many people were, had to be just for one like one patient, and I thought it was interesting how many fields there are for just one hospital. It's definitely cool being led by like women because usually you just see men and stuff, but there's a lot of women that do like a lot of things, so it's cool. It's nice. It's definitely yeah. cool. All right, and what have uh, been some of the lessons that you've learned in, in this camp? Um, you have to rely on each other. Yeah. yeah. It's teamwork. Teamwork. Team is a big uh, yeah. thing you need to be able to 
if you don't, <laughs> yeah, if you don't talk to like the people you're working with, you could end up being like a huge disaster. And mm -hmm. Everybody yeah, has definitely. to have one job, and people yeah, have definitely. to communicate. Really good communication. Yeah, communication is key. And was there anything that you uh, learned about the firefighter profession that just like kind of shocked you that you just had no idea? Oh, definitely. A I lot think of it things. was like yeah. that less than ten percent are women. I thought that was it's like yeah. three and a half percent now. Yeah, something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, yeah. But there's a lot more than you actually think because there's a lot that happens behind the scenes. Right. So you never really notice. And no like. It doesn't More have to just, just be putting out a fire. Yeah. They like go yeah. and they do paramedics, the paramedics and right. EMTs. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely nice. This is my second year. This is my second year. This is my first year. This is my second year. This is my first year. All right, excellent. And uh, what have you enjoyed? Uh, what activity have you enjoyed uh, most about Camp Bill out this year? We'll start over here. I like the search and rescue. <laughs> I loved going to UMass. <laughs> I liked um, the propelling, like the rappelling that we did at the face school, and I liked going to the UMass Trauma Center and going in the ambulance. <laughs> I like going to UMass. Yeah, I like going to UMass, and then I liked doing the like water rescue, and we got to go in the boats. All right, excellent. Uh, and what are some of the lessons that you have learned uh, in the camp this year? I learned that you can't just rely on yourself. You need like a team to get something done. You have to have like a lot of teamwork and work together or else you like can't get stuff done. You have to communicate well and be comfortable with your uh, other peers and other people so you can work well together. Um, other people rely on you to do stuff, to get, to get it done right and stuff. Yeah. yeah, like teamwork is really big and you also have to have confidence in yourself and then everyone else. Mm -hmm. And is there anything uh, that you learned about the firefighter profession that just shocked you that you just had no idea of? Um, I think the rappelling and then using the harnesses, I didn't think they would like rappel out of buildings. I thought they just used ladders. And I thought that was like really cool to learn and learn how they did it and rescue people that way. All right, terrific. Was there uh, anything that you didn't like? Anything that you didn't like doing in the camp? Or was it all good? I think everything, it was, awesome. I think everything, I everything. was good. I it was everything. fun. It was very fun. All right, terrific. Would you come back if you had the chance? Yes. 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 Here's a look at the students in the camp learning from Ashland Fire Department's Lieutenant Lynn Morahan and the other female firefighter instructors who are all from local departments. It's going to, especially people our size, it's going to push us back and you're going to be constantly fighting with, with it. So what we teach the kids at the academy is to get it out in front of you and that way you have a lot more flexibility. As long as you can reach down there and change the pattern and, and open and close this bale, you will. Uh, and the person behind you is taking all the pressure. The person that's operating the nozzle really shouldn't have any, any pressure that they're dealing with. But unfortunately, nowadays, with uh, smaller departments, a lot of times you're running this by yourself. You may have one person. Who, I'll never have three people. But Lori might. Yeah, I definitely might. will. I will. <laughs> so you kind of got to figure out ways how to put the line in front of you. Like if I'm by myself, drop it. Then I would I put the line like this, so I'd use my body weight to counteract the pressure. I do that, or else uh, I get on the ground to kneel on it. You do that too. There's all different tips that you can use uh, if you happen to find yourself by yourself. Okay. To close out the week-long camp, the students participated in an obstacle course, putting all their knowledge from the camp to the test and then they were handed their completion certificate in front of family and friends. To our 2017 Camp Bela program, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say that. Uh, before we get started, there's some people here in the audience that I would like to acknowledge. Our town manager, Michael Herbert. <laughs> Select woman, Yolanda Reeves. <laughs> the framing of fire chief, Joe Hicks. Thank you very much for coming today. So over the course of the five days, we took plenty of pictures and we are, our IT guy put together a video so we could show you what you girls have been doing for the last five days. Because I don't think you believe us. So we figured we put it together in a video and I'll show you folks because it's, uh, it's, it's kind of unbelievable.
as you folks can see, we accomplished quite a lot yeah. over the past yeah. five days, but none of this would have been possible without my support team. So I'd like to uh, recognize uh, the people that make this happen for me every year. The town manager, the yeah. board of selectmen that fund this camp so that it's free for the girls. Thank you very much. Yeah. The chief was not able to attend today. He had, a, he had a, a dog issue at home. So, but I would like to thank him for allowing us to use the facilities and all the equipment. And chief Slamon and Patrick for allowing us to use uh, their boat during boat operations. And all my guest instructors, you saw them. There was plenty of them in the volunteer their time. So I'd like to thank. team that work with me uh, day in day out and, and just like the fire service you know we accomplish something as a team whether it's going to extinguish a fire or it's a medical emergency you can't do it alone and I certainly wouldn't be able to put this camp on every year if it wasn't for the close team that I have working with me so I would like to certainly acknowledge the people that are here today and uh, Mike Tarosia for everything that Nick Kerrigan, who works for the Cambridge Fire Department. <laughs> Lori Roy, who works for the Franklin Fire Department. And Sarah Jordan, who is uh, unfortunately in negotiations right now in Hopkinton. And she works for Hopkinton Fire Department. So these, these young ladies and Michael are here. Oh, yes. I can't say enough about my team. Uh, these ladies are here five days working with me day in and day out. Not only do they, they give their personal time, but they also, sometimes they take time off work. So it's a huge commitment that they give to me and to you girls. And I just want to thank them personally. Thank you very much. They're true professionals in every, in every aspect of the work. So thank you ladies, I really appreciate it. All right, let's get to the uh, to the award ceremony. What do you think? Okay. Yeah. You guys ready? Yes. All right. <laughs> Megan, <laughs> from <the> center. <laughs> You can view a whole lot more from Camp Bailout on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash HKMTV, or our website, hkm.tv. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HKM channels. Standing by to tell you all about it is HKM's promotions coordinator, Matt Clark. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the HKM Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and here's what's happening this week on HKM. On Monday, July 24th at 7 p.m., poet, comedian, writer, radio host, and storyteller Wes Hazard shares his own unique brand of humor and wit on a brand new episode of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. Um, storytelling. I do a lot. Uh, I, comedy and storytelling have allowed me to do a lot of fun uh, little side activities. Uh, for example, uh, last summer I uh, was at Boston Comic Con. Uh, Boston Comic Con, if you're not familiar, it's a three day festival of uh, just Nerd Olympics. All right, so like, you know, gaming, anime, manga, uh, comic books, the whole bit. It's just really, really fun. I enjoy it. Boston does a really good job of putting on that show. Uh, and I got to do a little bit of work um, hosting some uh, web series segments for it. And at 8.30, Dr. Bruce Carlin meets with experts to discuss the best ways to keep you, your family, and pets safe from ticks and Lyme disease on a new episode of Physician Focus. So, you know, I'm looking at myself uh, after I've had my walk in the woods, and I see a quarter-inch tick crawling on me, not stuck to me. 
you're saying pretty much, you know, flush it and be done with it and don't worry. I mean, I think I would say that for any kind of tick that you see just crawling on you, because really the tick has to attach and feed in order for any potential disease transmission or exposure to occur. On Wednesday, July 26th at 7 p.m., Margie and Jen talk local and national happenings and invite you to join the conversation on a new episode of The Jen and Margie Show, live on HCAM TV. And on HCAM Ed, the Ashland Legion Baseball vs. Andover game will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv connect, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Right now on our website, hcam.tv, you can view more about Ashland Allegiant Baseball, plus more footage from Camp Bailout. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. We hope your summer has been great, and as always, thanks for watching HCAM. HCAM is supported by our viewers and by Blackstone Valley Wealth Management, providing highly personalized financial planning, wealth management, and customized solutions through transparent, unbiased advice. Visit us at BlackstoneValleyWealth.com.